Hi everyone, I'm Joanna Penn from thecreativepen.com and today I'm here for Indie Recon, fantastic conference online for indie authors and I'm doing a little video on five more interesting ways to build your readership, so not the standard Twitter, Facebook, blogging type uh, lot. Hopefully you will learn something new in this, uh, this little video. And you can download these slides at thecreativepen.com forward slash Indie Recon as a PDF so don't worry about writing loads of notes as we go through. I should also say that I write fiction and non-fiction, um, so thrillers, um, kind of on the edge of thriller, horror, crime, um, and also write non-fiction. So my tips are sort of spaced between the two uh, type of genres, so there should be something for everyone. So I just briefly wanted to touch on this funnel idea that is a kind of marketing principle that everybody should really know about because it explains everything. Uh, it explains all the stuff I'm going to talk about and how anything we do online or in person or just anything in general can draw people down this funnel towards actually becoming a fan and buying a book. Um, so first of all it's about getting attention and that will be some of the things I'll talk about today. So uh, and that can be obviously all the social media, it can be um, video, it could be audio, it could be a free copy of your book, uh, it could be a picture on social media, there are just so many options of what that attention can be. But what uh, a lot of research has found is that people are are not going to, people are very unlikely to buy your book the first time they hear about it. So all of these things are like little touches, little prods, um, reminding people that you exist, that you're there, um, and that draws them down this funnel. So once people are sort of prodded, then they go, oh, what's that? Uh, and then they can actually see whether or not they're interested. So for example, I like graveyards. I'm a taffophile, that's what the word is, if you didn't know. Uh, so I sometimes share pictures of graveyards, you know, gorgeous gravestones. I love architecture and sculpture and angels and stuff like that. Um, and some of you will be going, oh, that's really weird. Um, and other people will be going, that's very cool. I like graveyards too. Um, so those people may be more interested in my books by hearing something like that. So if I share a picture of um, a graveyard, a graves nice gravestone, someone might go, oh, cool, I'm going to follow her. Uh, or for my more author side of things, and my, you know, sort of um, working with authors, I might share um, a really interesting blog post um, that's all about uh, how to market a book. <laughs> and then that might get people's interest and that's how that snows, um, you know, snowballs. So once you actually get people's attention and then they're interested, you can build the desire around your actual work. So for example, they may have subscribed for your list, um, your email list, and of course that is a fundamental, everyone should have an email list on their website. Um, and then, you know, you're talking to them, you're sending your, um, you know, your updates. Uh, and then when you have a book out, they are far more likely to buy that book. So this is the kind of funnel. So everything I'm going to talk about today is not like, you do one thing and suddenly everyone's buying your book. It just doesn't work like that. It's more like a funnel effect. And so most of the things I'll be talking about are the top level, how to actually get attention and then bring people down that funnel. Okay, so the first interesting thing I want to talk about is audio. And there's a few reasons why. Um, one is that many of us are now starting to do audiobooks through acx.com, and which is uh, the Audible Creation Exchange uh, owned by Amazon, and it's you know, a fantastic way to get your books uh, into audio as an indie author. But I'm not talking specifically about how to do ACX, but how having audio actually really helps people as a marketing uh, exercise. So here's a couple of ways you can do it. One, uh, author Scott Sigler at scottsigler.com has been doing this for years and I came to know of Scott Sigler through his free podcasts. Um, he podcasts his fiction every week and there's an example there, his book Nocturnal. He uh, continues to freely podcast in his own voice um, his fiction uh, and people just people become massive fans of his. Now that there's something personal about hearing the author's voice. It, it sort of connects in much more of a way than hearing somebody else read it. Now, I have audiobooks on ACX, but I haven't read them. But what I do have is here, you can see um, is one of my examples. Um, I've read a couple of my own short stories. Um, so these are, um, this one's Sins of Temptation, which is based on uh, Dante's Inferno. Um, and I have that released as a thousand fiendish angels, uh, which is actually a free ebook. But also I have 
have free short story audios and that's actually me reading for about 25 minutes um, that people can download for free. So you can put you can do a podcast like Scott which is pretty much with a podcast you really have to be regular um, and I'm not so confident doing that with my fiction so I just do occasional mp3 downloads uh, on my fiction website. Now another option especially for non-fiction authors is to do um, uh, is to do a podcast but to do it more of interviews so I have the Creative Pen podcast which is interviews every couple of weeks with uh, people around writing and publishing and, and book marketing uh, and the other one there I've put is the self-publishing podcast which if you don't know you should definitely be listening to uh, although language warning uh, on that one mine is clean podcast um, but essentially by interviewing people by putting out uh, information for free because podcasts are pretty much all free um, you can attract a specific audience and they will become fans of yours through hearing your voice and I'm on I think episode 175 of the creative pen podcast and there are people who listened to every all episodes so of course they're going to know me quite well because they've heard my voice that type of thing they've heard my voice for years in fact so that's very cool. So anyway, those are some of the different aspects of doing audio. How do you actually do audio? So, uh, oh, I should, this is, you know, in terms of why you should do it, uh, obviously one is that relationship with your voice. Uh, two is that you can actually connect with influencers. So I've had really great friendships born of my podcast um, and opportunities that have come because I've met people and, and interviewed them on the show. So that's really good. It will help you meet people in your niche. Um, I also interview people um, for my YouTube channel and other authors, other thriller authors. I've got a uh, Thriller, thriller TV where I interview um, thriller authors so that's really cool so you can connect with influencers connect with other people in your niche um, you can also get incoming traffic because everyone you interview <laughs> as a podcast is very likely to share that information share it with their list you know share it on social media so you can actually get incoming traffic based on um, interviewing other people it also attracts a different audience. So I listen to quite a few podcasts and with those shows, I never go to the blog. I only listen to the podcast. So that means that I have a very different relationship with that person than, you know, people who might read the blog. So it just gives you another aspect to the people who can find you. Uh, and my my brief tips for um, audio, um, certainly for podcasting, create long term evergreen content. So for me, it's not about doing a news show of like you know the news this week because that you know becomes obsolete very quickly. It's got to be more long term content. So a short story, for example, me reading a short story that's going to be great for years. I mean, it's just no problem whatsoever. Um, no, that won't age. Fiction doesn't age, which is just brilliant. Uh, it's also got to be valuable to your audience. So again, really, really useful for non-fiction authors. You can basically take your book, pick the themes of your book, do a podcast around, you know, those topics, interview people, other authors, do some cross-promotion. Very handy. Um, you should also use an SEO title. I see this all the time. People just put episode 55 in their headline that's not going to get you uh, Google search traffic so uh, you can see some examples here of mine so book marketing how to use Wattpad as an author with Ashley Gardner now most people won't know who Ashley Gardner is she's the head of content at Wattpad but the interesting thing is how to use Wattpad as an author okay and and the the keywords book marketing so if you're going to do um, your podcast then actually be watch the language that you use is the same as people use uh, then just briefly some tools that I use I use Skype for everything which of course is free um, I use Ecamm for recording Skype and uh, you can also use Pamela.biz uh, on the PC uh, you can use Audacity which is free to edit your audio and I use Blueberry plugin with WordPress to actually distribute my podcast. Now this is not a technical little video so I've actually included the link there. There's a, a post on my blog which is how to create a podcast so you can always look at that if you fancy investigating that option.
Okay, let's talk about image marketing because this is very hot right now. And I think the reason why is that people are inundated with uh, messages and content and stuff to look at and it's just become overwhelming for people. So what's happening, especially when people are sort of scrolling down on their cell phone, is seeing an image will very quickly get their attention. So again, if you remember that funnel, it's about getting attention. I've got some examples here. Um, uh, you know, images just help convey a mood, uh, an emotion, and emotion is, you know, what we're aiming to provoke in people so they're more, they, they remember us. So um, you can see here my, uh, one of my, my Pinterest pages for my book, Desecration. Um, you all, you can already get a sense of what the book is, is like by some of the pictures that are there, um, you know, sort of body parts and skeletons and um, uh, wax models in um, sort of glass cases and things like that. Um, so that's one idea, obviously using Pinterest sites like that. Um, the, the picture of the fawn here is just beautiful. Uh, it's, uh, it says, heroic boy risks his life to save a drowning fawn in Bangladesh. And there's this, you know, this guy's hand. But look where, how many times it's been shared. This is on Google+. Plus. 1,187 pluses and 154 shares. That's a brilliant image. I mean, no, nobody's going to go probably and read that article, but you know what that that means. And that's uh, that's actually a, a, the Daily Mail in um, England sharing that picture. But it really caught my eye, and you can see how many people share that. So using images, so if you're gonna write a blog post, you must, 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 must include an image that is nicely shareable. Uh, and then I've got uh, another example here now on Twitter. They've now changed the uh, the feed, so you can actually use images within the feed. So what I've done there is, um, and and when people retweet and everything, it uses the images. So you can see there that from Twitter itself, the video is playable, and also I've included a picture of the you know what it's about. So you can see that I talked to um, this author, Colin Falconer, who's actually retweeted it. Um, so that's another example of other people sharing your content when it's about them. <laughs> um, but basically, it will retweet with that image, and people are more likely to qu to click on something with an image. And Facebook and Google Plus and Twitter have all changed their setups around images. So really important. Uh, so uh, the, here are some other examples. Again, I mentioned the graveyard. That's one of my graveyard images um, from Kensal Green in London. Um, that is a BuzzFeed, um, the, the wine one there is a buzz, BuzzFeed infographic. Uh, I must say I think infographics are a hell of a lot of work, but they seem to be quite popular. Um, and then down the bottom there is a quote. Now quotes are getting really good sharing. Um, so that one is using a site called Notegraphy to create a very nice formatted picture of a quote in seconds, really. You just type the quote in, format it, and then you can share it on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and whatever. So there's quite a lot of authors now using quotes from their own books to actually, you know, uh, share, which is a nice idea, and I keep wanting to do it myself. Um, so uh, I haven't actually done that. So I I have been sharing. That's one of my shares there. We off the craft are all crazy. Got lots of shares on Twitter. Um, of course, amongst writers, we all love that type of thing. Um, so. I actually think images are also brilliant because they're so easy to do. So if you have a, you know, you have a smartphone, so I've got my iPhone here, and actually I just did one today. Um, I was outside and it was sunny and there were some nice flowers, so I took a picture um, and uh, edited it on, uh, I have Camera Plus, the app Camera Plus, I think it's only one one ninety nine or something, um, to make a nice picture, and then I share that picture on Twitter, Facebook, um, you can use Instagram, um, Flickr, all of those different sites. So you can actually do an image marketing type thing in under five minutes. Uh, so it's actually what I recommend a lot of people try and do these days uh, is an image a day, something like that. And also um, emotional resonance, as I mentioned, and targeted to your audience. Who do you want to attract with this image? And uh, looking at a site like BuzzFeed, which is the uh, world's fastest growing blog or something like that and it's um, pretty addictive once you have a look at it um, but they use images in a very uh, clever way so definitely look at that. 
Okay, let's talk about free. Now, free isn't new, but it used to be that we only really talked about free around KDP Select, um, Amazon KDP Select. But um, what really the aim with free is now is to go very wide with free. So, for example, the iBook store, a lot of people, the Apple iBook store, a lot of people are quite exasperated because, you know, not, not selling very much. It is, um, and, and I have heard some um, heard Mark Coker from Smashwords talk about this and talk about the fact is that Apple are more of you know for books they're more of a hardware you know it's, it's more about the hardware than it is about you know the book sales so if you have stuff for free they're far more likely to promote it so that's quite interesting so having the first in a series free on every platform um, can mean that you can start getting traction so I've got four now in my arcane series Pentecost is the first one here you can see at the bottom there it is um, it's free in Kindle um, but you can also see the paperback and the audio version on Amazon uh, it's free on Kobo it's free on iBookstore. bookstore you can see there on Wattpad it's had uh, over 180,000 reads um, and I definitely have had people comment on my um, fiction blog at jfpen.com um, that people have actually come over and discovered my books because of reading Pentecost on Wattpad so that's really interesting and um, however free is really only useful for the first one in a series because the idea being that people will go on and buy the next lot um, so yeah I think it's a, it's definitely a, a no risk discovery mechanism and can if you bring in lots of people at the top of the funnel it will bring people down and uh, people who are doing this um, you know, have been talking about this for a while. Lindsay Baroka, uh, who's a fantastic fantasy author. Um, the guys at the Self Publishing Podcast. Um, you can get all of their uh, first books for free in all of their series. Um, so quite a lot of people are doing it now. It's pretty mainstream, but I still don't see a lot of authors doing this kind of, you know, permanently free solution um, to try and attract people in. Uh, and I think, you know, you can see there that Pentecost has got pretty good reviews. I think it's probably best to only do it once you have a good number of reviews, because if you put too much for free early, you can get bad reviews unless it's well targeted. Then it's actually cheaper to promote free books. So on BookBub, for example, it's much cheaper to promote a free book than it is to promote paid book. So it, obviously you might not make money back immediately, but if you bring in enough people into the funnel, you're going to make money from the other books in the series. And I found that sales of Prophecy and Exodus and One Day in Budapest, and the others in this series, have all continued to grow since I went perma-free in November and it's now February. So just uh, in case you don't know how to do it, you need to, to load on Kobo and iBookstore as free or Smashwords or wherever as free and eventually Amazon will price match. You can report uh, a lower price on your page to get it changed. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is relationships and collaboration, because <laughs> I found so many amazing opportunities through becoming friends with other authors. Now, many people say, oh, blogging for authors and writers is pointless, um, social media to attract writers and authors is pointless, but the reality is we really need a community, for one, and secondly, amazing things come out of relationships, and of put a couple of examples here. Uh, one is the um, the Deadly Dozen, which uh, is coming end of February, beginning of March 2014. So, um, and we, because um, I am one of them, uh, the 12 uh, XII dot com. Um, essentially, we are doing a box set, um, you know, aiming to get lots of people to download that box set. So it's going to be 12 full length or 12 books, um, some full length, some novella length um, books for 99 cents. So it's a really blooming good deal. Um, and it's, you know, it's a very exciting collaboration. Now, we basically met through social media on Twitter and, you know, through relationships at Thriller Fest, that type of thing. Now, I would add and most of these um, bloggers, uh, bloggers, most of these authors are American, uh, with a couple of us Europeans. Um, 
but essentially there's no way things like this can happen unless authors get together. Um, you don't see these multi-author box sets coming out of traditional publishing, so it's something that indie authors can do really well, um, or hybrid authors of course, but you have to have the rights to your books to do this type of thing. So that's one brilliant uh, kind of idea. Um, other examples here, I've got um, Triskiel Books, it, it is a, an author, um, uh, you know, collaboration, the collective, sorry, they, they call themselves a collective. So they market as a collective group, but they all hold their own rights. So that's uh, really interesting as well. The Alliance of Independent Authors, so um, is a brilliant group, uh, which I'm a part and, and uh, a member and a uh, um, uh, you know an advisor and and we kind of you know we have a Facebook group where we kind of share all this information and you can really learn great things by collaborating and you know building these relationships um, and so many of my actual friends now I, I met on Twitter and when I, I remember when I started as an author I mean I really knew nobody I, I absolutely knew no one so it the relationships you can build online and then working together for collaboration and marketing just is fantastic these days so definitely taking advantage of it you, you just never know what's going to come up you really don't um, and another great way to kind of work together here is um, this is an example of uh, I interviewed uh, Alan Leveroni on my um, jfpen.com blog and talked about writing horror and thrillers and so that's really cool so it's a really good way of promoting other authors is um, interviewing similar ones on your site so then of course remember that all of these things are just that top end of the funnel you might be thinking well how does how does building author relationships on social media end up helping me find readers <laughs> well it just you know once you start meeting people once you start helping other people sharing what you've learned it's just kind of happens in this sort of serendipitous way um so i've been doing this i've been online for five years now and writing fiction for three years and you just start to meet people and then over time these relationships develop and then people ask you to join things so it, it does take time. This is not a a quick uh, a quick thing. Obviously, any kind of relationship takes a while to grow, but it's really worth it. Okay, and then our final thing is uh, speaking. Now, I know a lot of people have problems with speaking. Um, you know, you think, well, what, I write. I'm a writer. I don't speak. Um, but again, going back to the audio, the audio is obviously you record it in your... Uh, house on your own like I'm recording this here on my own <laughs> um, and then you know people can watch it in their homes and it's all great but with speaking um, there's a, a picture here of um, my friend Dan Holloway who's a performance poet and I get a lot of emails about poets trying to sell work now pretty much the, the only way to sell poetry is through live readings because then you can actually connect with people emotionally so again Speaking is about being a real person and connecting and people are far more likely to be interested in your work if they've connected with you on some kind of personal level. So um, that's Dan doing his thing with the mic um, and uh, that's me speaking in Berlin where I met loads of brilliant Germans um, and this year I'm, I'm publishing some books in Germany so um, that type of relationship is amazing and then um, the bottom picture there is me doing the Guardian masterclass and essentially the speaking can be an income stream of course um, but those people who come and hear you speak are far more likely to buy your books far more likely to tell uh, stories about you to other people true stories obviously good stories um, word of mouth marketing and um, don't worry about you so don't get obsessed about you nobody cares about you what you look like um, what they care about is themselves so as long as you focus on entertaining them challenging them helping them it's all about the audience so that's kind of the number one thing to focus on uh, when you do any kind of speaking and the final thing is whenever you speak make sure you do a download page um, or maybe not if you're a poet, but um, any kind of speaking I do, I always do a download page because it can bring people back to your website, um, which is part of the aim, really. So uh, yeah, and on that note, 
Um, you can download these slides at thecreativepen.com forward slash indie recon. You can also tweet me at thecreativepen or uh, check out some of the free resources at thecreativepen.com.